Reporting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. minutes after nine o'clock and it's time for in the garden with carol ann carol ann baldwin is in the studio to answer your questions i think you had a couple of them this morning asking if you were coming in live oh. <laughs> even though you're always here live one well, once in a while there's an exception people are anxious to find out about the cold weather and what they sure. should do so good morning carol ann. good morning doing? larry real good it's cold you look now. great you thank look, you your hair looks lighter it's, just, it's down it's you know me, me and my son in that's how i play with it <laughs> <laughs> So the phone number, if you'd like to call Caroline, is 622-9622. We invite your calls. I know some of you have questions. Maybe you can kind of nip it in the bud. Not nip. that you don't want to hear it from people. But nah, a lot we, of we'd people like to. Yeah, every, I'm call, sure right? everybody's going to be going, it's cold. Well, 32. What do I do? I think what they do I see do with my plans? They what see do that do number 32 mm-hmm. in the forecast, and they get excited. Actually, actually, we start, you know. Even when we hear just 38 and 36, yeah, it's, yeah, you know, yeah. and yes, this morning I gathered my house plants together in a, in a group. We're circling the, circling the flower pots and frost blanket is sitting there ready to, to cover them. Um, yeah, it's going to be, it's, this is, you know, the first real cold we had, we had a little cold snap, yeah, which I complained that it was cold out and I will complain even more fiercely that it's cold out, <laughs> um, but yes, this is one that because we've, I, I think they were saying this morning, we're, we've had a 17 degree difference in temperatures from yesterday to today. Yeah, big, big drop. Big, big, big drop, which our plants are not used to. Uh-huh, it's uh-huh. one thing when we get cool and progressively get colder as yeah, winter goes, yeah. uh, they, they acclimate somewhat, but not when it's like this. It's going from, oh, okay, it's pretty nice out to, oh my, it's it's cold. And so, yes, if you have some tender houseplants that are sitting outside, I'd be making plans to bring them in. How about my apple tree? Uh, apple tree's going to be fine. You figure yeah. apples grow pretty much anywhere. Oh, okay, oh okay. shoot. I was going to take a picture of mine today, and I forgot. <laughs> I was going to hold the ruler up. You have yours outside? It. It, it's outside, yeah. It's sitting there. It's getting it's getting tall. Wow, it's, uh, wow, wow. And I think that's from the from the top of the pot. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah. he's he's a good two feet tall minus his pot. <laughs> um, still no branches because I don't want to do anything to, to yeah, start yeah, any yeah, branches yeah. yet. So maybe next spring Doesn't I'll make him. I'll turn him into natural? a dwarf. Doesn't it happen? Um, I think what I'll do is I'm going to clip the top. Yeah, but, but I'll probably do it next spring. But what if it was growing out in nature? It would get branches. It would. Itself. It would eventually. You huh. know. Yeah. But it may. You know. May not get as many branches. Or not exactly where you want it. Oh really? really? So I'm, I'm going to let. I'm going to probably tip mine. This spring and see, oh, well. we'll play with it. We'll play with them. But yes, it is cold out. Yes, if you've you know, I and I'm I'm not a big one for frost blankets for the landscape so much. But if you have containerized plants, uh, and if you've got some stuff that maybe um, some of those some of those cooler weather things, it, it again the temperature is just it's a sudden drop. They've not had chance to acclimate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you've got some things that maybe went in the ground not too long ago. Um, they're gonna they're gonna react to this cold weather and the wind yesterday just zapped out a lot of the moisture and and if anybody if anybody's new to the area that's how our cold fronts come through we get well not necessarily the wind but some rain which we got mm-hmm. and boom temperatures drop the only thing we didn't have right, in play right, this right. time is the full moon was a few was what last week ah, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. could be why we're not going to get as cold. 
You never know. Really? But we get clear. When it gets cold, it gets clear. So all the heat yeah, radiates just, up and out. Just and, leave the area. Yeah. 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 All right, you do have a phone call, so I'm waiting patiently. Good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Good morning, Carol Ann. Thank you for taking my call. Yeah. Um, I am I am new to the area, so okay. I have um, some potted plants. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if I could just take them in and put them in the garage, mm -hmm. not a heated yeah. garage. Yeah, and they, um, and they should be fine in there. Okay, do I have to water them still? Or, if, I mean, they're like those elephant ears, but they're, you know... Uh, variegated. They're not those big green elephant ears. Oh, okay. I but, don't really but they're, know what yeah, they're, they're yeah. variegated. You know, eventually, but because you have them potted, um, they may not. You know, normally out in nature, uh, elephant ears they're going to freeze to the ground, and that's what they do. You know, that's just that's just natural. They come back up the next spring. <clears throat> Excuse me. And but yes, you could put them in the heated garage. They're still going to stress because at below forty degrees, so usually those elephant ears start to they'll they'll show a little wilt to them. Mm -hmm. Once it warms up, they're apt to pop back up. Um, if the plants are dry. I would give them uh -huh. a little bit of water here this morning if you can, or early, you know, early in the day. You don't want to do yeah. it at four o'clock in the afternoon because then they're right. then the waters the the soil's cold um, coming uh -huh. into the coming into the evening. But yeah, give them a little drink of water. Wait till this afternoon to drag them there into the garage, but that's acceptable. You're going to keep the frost from settling on them. Um, if we keep up with a breeze, we probably won't get much frost. Um, and I don't think the temperature is going to get down there and stay. It's going to be one of those bounces. But it's still going to get okay. down to that 32, 33 degrees before it yeah. turns around and come, starts working its way back up. And the poinsettias as well? Bring those poinsettias, there. bring those. I would probably bring the poinsettia in the house if you can. Okay. Yes. They, they're a lot more sensitive. Thanks. And Christmas cactus also. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, that's the kind of question we love. Yeah. Uh, yeah, call in and uh, ask a question, and Caroline will help you out. The number is 622-9622. So I have one based on what you said, and I know you say this pretty much every yeah. time it gets called. It's the frost cloth. Right. Is that something you have to buy, or can you yeah. make that out uh, of a sheet? You can You can use a sheet, and if I'm going to sneeze in a minute, I'll, uh, just excuse me in, in <laughs> advance. Suddenly, I just got a tickle in my nose. Um, no, you can use sheets. You can use... Blankets, you know, out of the closet. A lot of people in the winter time will or, or will will collect up. They'll they'll go to yard sales and thrift stores and stuff just to to buy them because the frost cloth can be a little pricey. Um, but it's the difference is frost blanket can be left covering the plants for a few days without being a big problem even though it might be a green in color or white or whatever that it is keeping some of the light out it's porous enough or breathes enough that it's not going to create that greenhouse effect or and they they do shed some of the water that might happen overnight the dew that'll settle will will run mm -hmm. off of them instead of being absorbed by the fabric ah, okay. and you don't want whatever you're using you need to do something to keep that fabric from landing or laying right on top of the plants because wherever it lays that's going to be where it's going to frost ah okay, okay. yeah you know, because you're just you're just laying it on top so there frost lands on top of that? that or makes you make a little tp if they're they're small plants maybe oh, okay. you can put a folding chair over top of oh, them okay, uh okay. get the bamboo stakes and make a little um you know tp or just even put one right in the middle to where it's not laying okay, on the okay. on the uh plant material because wherever it touches that's what will burn never ever 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 use plastic not on the plant you could make yourself a little greenhouse or or tarpaulins or the plastic tarpaulins don't use those either now if you're using um one year i had a neighbor used one of the easy up tents and yes if you're watching the video i've got all kinds of gestures going this morning <laughs> so you're missing them on the radio um put up one of their easy up tents and then covered the outside with tarp and plastic so they had a little mini temporary greenhouse okay, yeah. but they could put over some of the taller plants. They had like a couple of smaller banana trees that makes sense. Yeah. and, oh, and yeah. things like that and could move those larger potted plants up in there. They're not in the house. They're not cluttered up. If they wanted to, they could have run a little heater, space heater right, out on right, those yeah, really, yeah. really cold nights or even just, you know, strings, you know, get if you can find an incandescent 
you know, 100 watt bulb. You know, nowadays it's, you know, hard to find that kind of bulb at all, let alone a, you know, 100 watt or a spotlight in something like that, Mm because everything's gone to LED and halogens and things. Yeah, right. right, right. Uh, Some of the stuff doesn't put out the heat. Um, But there's all kinds of different things. But yeah, we don't want to use plastic on top of our plants if you make an actual greenhouse where it's not touching. But also remember, too, that even though it may only warm up to 60 degrees outside, the outside air temperature, if the sun is shining on that, it's going to get hot in there. So you're going to have to open that during the day Mm -hmm. to let, you know, because otherwise you'll just do the opposite. You'll cook them. Make too hot. Yeah, Yeah, you get it too hot in there because at 60 degrees outside in the full sun, if that's covered in plastic, it's probably going to get up there to 80 you know, maybe maybe higher ninety, yeah, yeah, and and then temperature will drop again. So just opening up the sides to something like that, and your frost blankets normally can be left on. Like we've got two nights here, two nights in a row. So if you were to cover this afternoon and try to do it early while the sun's still up or near the end of the the end of the afternoon, um, you can leave it tonight and tomorrow night, and then just uncover them on Thursday morning. Okay. And you know that way, that way they're they'll be okay. Realize the stores have probably because of this weather have probably sold out really quick out of whatever frost blanket. Oh, really? They had in stock because it hasn't really started to ship. But are you paying extra just because it's called a frost blanket? Um, like I said, it is a little different weave that it can uh, be yeah. left on. It does shed the water off. Um, and and so it's it's something that you you know it'll it'll fold up and reusable um some of them are actually have grommets so that you can actually put a a stake in it to hold it to the ground um they come in wide rolls or like six foot what is it six foot long six foot wide six times five 30 50 feet long so you got like 300 square feet Mm -hmm. in one so if you had a long bed in the front of the house that you really wanted to cover you would have one continuous piece okay i've seen that or if you have a large plant that needs to be covered because that blanket needs to come all the way to the ground doesn't do any good just to wrap the top up because you're not holding any heat in. I got you so it's got to yeah it needs to come to the ground because because you're actually using the earth to keep the plant warm. So um, I've seen like hedges, for example, mm-hmm. covered, and it looks to me that the cloth is touching the leaves. You know, they're just laying right on top of them, and usually it's not doing any good because it's just covering the top. Uh, so they're doing it yeah, wrong. They're, they're, yeah, it's not, it, yeah, you kind of wasted your time and your effort in oh, okay, okay. most of that because you'll still find maybe you'll protect some of the bud that uh-huh. might be in there um, but most of our hedges and things like that are very cold hardy. You know, you look out here, hollies are hardy, uh, Indian hawthorns are hardy, um, you know, camellias are hardy and, and this cold isn't going to hurt the buds on a camellia shrub it would be if they were going to really drop down to hard freeze and it would there's the little um out, out front of the the paddock mall here they have the uh, little john uh bottle brush and they're blooming right now and and they're going to be fine yeah, yeah you know the, it's it's most things are not going to be hurt your perennials yes if you and and these are the kind of things of i don't like to cover perennials because they're meant to go to sleep in the winter. It's just, unfortunately with us, it's suddenly it was a nice fall day yeah, yeah, yesterday, yeah, yeah, yeah. and today it's winter. Uh, <laughs> right, so right, right, right. so it's, it's, um, they might just, you know, it might go into that, uh, you know, quick, it may kill them off, uh, it, you know, it may kill some off or just damage them really quickly. So if you wanted to cover it just to, to hopefully they can start to acclimate to some of those temperatures before they actually really freeze off uh, or, or die back, not freeze off, but uh, you know, die back for the winter, go to sleep for the winter, go to the dormancy, pick your word uh, for that. But, um, you know, make sure, you know, we had some we had some rain yesterday. If it didn't or if you don't don't think you had enough rain, go out there, hand water things early. Do it you know, early so that, you know, it's not at 4 o'clock in the afternoon um, when it's starting. Those temperatures are really beginning to drop. Um, so that the water, the, the soil, and that can, can come up in temperature. Another way to help insulate some things would be just some extra mulch. Um, and usually this, this first one, I, I don't usually worry that much about it. It's when they start talking hard freeze mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. we're on the second or third one and some of the things have already frozen back. Um, 
I've taken and just take got a bag of pine bark nugget, uh, opened the bag and just dumped it right on the base of a vining plant, right, right there at the trellis, knowing that whatever's on the top, it doesn't matter. That's going to freeze anyway. That's going to go. I'm trying to protect the root zone uh, where right. it's going to come sure. back from. Yeah, that makes sense. And then... Oh, I don't know, two and a half months later, I cleaned off all the stuff off that trellis, pulled that mulch back, and bingo, I had new shoots that were already uh, four or five inches high, oh, wow. ready to wow. go and and to start, and it had its fresh mulch. So um, can you talk a little bit about, the pla- in spite of the warnings mm-hmm. that you give a lot of people to not plant those things that really are better for South Florida. Right. We still have a lot of people having them here. And we do, so and we are, sell them. Yeah, we, are there any warnings for those specific plants that really don't normally get cold? That, uh, right, that are, yeah, that are considered tropicals where yeah, we're in a subtropical yeah. area. For example, uh, Exoras, which you may, you probably don't know what Exora no, is, no but they're real pretty. They bloom a lot. Um, the dwarf Exora at 40 degrees. 40 degrees. Not even, don't even have to drop down to freezing. So this is going to happen to a lot of people tonight. I would cover Exora because at 40 degrees, you can come by and smack that plant and all the leaves will fall off. Oh, wow. It's not that it's dead. It's just, oh it just, it does not like the cold weather. Really? And so at 32, that's an item actually in the store tonight. I will either be covering or possibly even putting on racks and putting inside the building wow, wow. Uh, just because I can't have uh, I can't afford to have them drop all their leaves on me uh, hibiscus is another one that if it's got buds and things like that those are apt to get a little bit of cold damage with this I'd cover if they're in pots if they're in pots drag them in to the garage mm-hmm. into you know sure. you got a yeah, you got yeah. a patio that maybe you know heated a little bit or a sunroom kind of thing and and just Bring them in. And you have another phone call. All right. Good morning. Thank you for calling in for waiting. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Yes. Uh, good morning, guys. You're morning. Calling. Yeah. See, uh, I, I, I got <laughs> uh, I love Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad you do. I, I, I've got a, a chlamydia that I, it, it's been in the ground now for maybe six months, and it, it's got these little red blossoms on it now. Uh-huh. Does that need to be protected? Probably. Probably. Oh, oh, it, yeah, I, cause it's it's out, it's in full sun and it's out next to the driveway. It's about maybe uh, two foot, two or three foot high. Okay. So uh, uh, I, I was told that it was going to be kind of a hardy plant, but now when it has a blossom, it should be covered. It's, up. it's it's the bud, it's the flower that would be damaged. I think with that one more, not necessarily. But you figure with this first thirty-two degree uh, night. When last night, well, not last night, but say the night before, you know, we were in, you know, upper 50s, you know, 40s. Suddenly, yeah. we're, suddenly we're 17 degrees colder already yeah. today as what we yeah. were yesterday. And so that's what it is. It did does not get a chance to acclimate itself to the weather conditions that we're currently having. If we'd have gotten a little colder and a little colder and a little colder, then suddenly 32, then 32 degrees, it probably would have been fine it might have even not bloomed or or such like that i'd probably give it some protection or realize you're going to lose those buds or those flowers that are there um yeah no but that's is, is that considered a bush or a tree now you said which one did you call it a uh, chlamydia no that one are you thinking a camellia or camellia. Camellia is going to be fine. Actually, even those flowers should be fine. Yeah, I, I was I, thinking. I, I was thinking some... clematis vine. I was thinking a clematis, but then as you got going, thinking it was hardier, and because a lot of times the clematis will handle our weather too, if you can get any. But no, the the uh, uh, the camellia should be fine. How big do they get? Um, six to eight feet. Oh boy! It's yeah. a, it's a it's a large shrub or small tree, um, yeah. depending on how you shape it. Um, if you get it up into a single or just say a multi trunk, keeping mostly just the top of it, it would be a um, a tree. If you let all the branches be down closer to the ground, it's going to be a shrub. But there are some too that are a little bit smaller that may only be getting to about four feet. There's yeah. different, yeah, a lot of different varieties of them. Yeah, uh, do they get do, do they get pretty wide too? Um, yeah, they can be fairly wide. I'd say if it was one that was going to be a six to eight footer, you're probably looking at about four feet or better wide. Oh boy. 
Yeah. yeah I, I, I might have planted it too close to my, my fence. I, when would be a good time to r- r- move that out a little bit, like in spring? Uh, probably about sometime uh, January, February. Oh, okay. Well, it's still cold out. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna probably do that because I think it, it's uh, it, as you described. It looks like it's gonna be growing into that fence. That I, I I wish I would have done it to begin well, with. Well, actually, but do do you have the name of the one you that you bought? I mean, do you have that one the the name tag tucked away somewhere? Because you can look yeah. it up. You can look it up and then find out what its mature size is. You, you know, I, I think there's something that was attached to the to the bush or tree itself uh-huh. that's still hanging there. Yeah, take a look. Look it up. Write it down. Look it up online and see what the mature size is going to be for it because it might be fine. Oh, okay. So there's different varieties. Yes, then, huh? there's a lot of different varieties. On camellias, there's probably, oh gosh, at least I think about eight different flower styles. Just the flower, the look of the flower. Um, yeah. How many petals they have in that, different ones, let alone the different colors of them as well as uh, sizing on them yeah. as well. Okay, I will. I'll do that. Thanks. Hey, real yeah. quick, uh, yeah. I had a friend that had just moved down here recently, and uh, they they have a lot of plants and stuff in the house and that. And they they asked me if they live in the city of Ocala. See, I live out here in Silver Spring, so I right. got well water, right. which is safe for all my. They wanted to know if the city water was safe for uh, house plants. I would probably um, not use city water too often on the house plants. You know, occasionally, okay, but if it's going to rain, I'd probably set a bucket outside, collect up a you know a little bit of water and use that to water my house plants you know yeah. I, I i don't i don't want to go out and buy water or maybe you can come over and bring a couple of empty empty water jugs over to your house get the get the well water and bring it yeah. over to water because the city water just the chemicals and things like that same as if you have a water softener system the water softener salt is going to build up in those plants and actually begin to, to harm the plant over time yeah, I, I know. I, I learned that uh, the hard way when I first moved to Florida. I was yeah. using my water that was coming out of the garage, out of the water softener. And, right. Uh, that, that, didn't, that didn't take long to knock those guys out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, stay warm. Uh, All right, you too. Gonna be, uh, as I'm talking to you right now, I'm looking out of my backyard. This will probably be the last time I'm going to see my grass green because <laughs> I think uh, after tomorrow it's going to be a brown color again. It, it'll whatever. probably, yeah, it'll probably but, be uh, a good straw grass color for a while, yeah. Yeah. But I, I did plant, as you know, I planted some rye grass, right. and it's doing good. So the rye is going to protect should I water it? that, do you think? Um, I mean, nature should be water. should hopefully water it enough, you know, maybe okay. every 10 days. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah. I know one thing, it, it likes to grow. <laughs> well, that's good. It's going to keep you mowing all winter, give you something to do. Well, I just did a little part of the, uh, the yard where I have my dogs. Uh, they like to lay in the grass all oh, year sure, around. Oh, sure, sure. I wanted to make sure there was some nice grass for them there, you know. Right, but, right. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, okay, well, stay warm now through the next cold front. Oh, yeah, you too. Okay, bye now. Bye-bye yeah, now. Yeah, it's going to cold. Yep. By the way, if you do have chlamydia, you should cover it because I think it's contagious. Pretty yeah, sure. I think so. See your doctor. Pre- pretty sure that's yeah, a contagious sure. one. I don't think but the cold yeah. weather will matter. In no, that I don't case, think so, but yeah, I'd yeah, see your doctor. Okay, take, care uh, of that. <laughs> take care of that thing. Uh, and I said, I'm watching, seeing the time, and we got all kinds of, Robin, Robin said, oh, we got all kinds of things here. Um, but I'm going to concentrate on, though, on giveaways, is that we've got... Three family four packs to Wild Adventures Theme Park up in Valdosta, Georgia. They do need to be used before the end of December. So wow. oh you're talking God. maybe, you know, if the kids are off of school for a, two hour you know, for a few weeks, it's a couple hours drive. Um, but that's no worse than going somewhere else. But they, we've got family four packs, so we're going to give them away um, during the break. And so it'll be pretty much one of those things. Call up. We're going to get a name and a phone number to go with it. And um, So if I answer the phone, then that means you won. That means you won. (laughs) All right. Uh, And it's a two-hour drive on I-75, so you don't really have to... Do right. a whole it's, lot it's a pretty production. simple yeah, yeah it's a pretty simple trip up to Valdosta and it's um you know there is no resale it's got to, the name on the the name on the ID's got to be the name on the on who's going there so you can't 
get this ah. and give it away. Yeah. Well, you can yeah. give it away as long as you tell you, us so long, the name. Right. The name that's going to yeah. go on it. Yeah. Right. And they've got all kinds of things to do. Maybe we can talk about it a little bit when we come back from the break. All right. Very good. All right. Okay. If you would like to win those prizes, you yeah. need to call 622-9622. You will not be on the air. I'll talk to you off the air or um, Robin will if she comes in here. Uh, and we'll write down your information and then you're in. And, you uh, and we'll tell you how you get these. If if uh, the, the break is over and we haven't answered your call, then you can hang up because somebody else won. We'll be right back. This is WOCA Ocala. Fox News. I'm Chris Foster. President Trump on Twitter calls special counsel Robert Mueller a conflicted prosecutor gone rogue. Former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort's in trouble with Mueller again. Mueller has tossed out Manafort's plea deal, exposing him to more prison time and the possibility of additional criminal charges. Prosecutors say the 69-year-old violated the deal by repeatedly lying to investigators in the Russia probe. Manafort, who cannot withdraw his guilty plea, denies that he lied. Fox's Rachel Sutherland. Three American service members have been killed in a roadside bombing in eastern Afghanistan. Three additional service members and an American contractor are hurt. The bombing in a region region with an active Taliban presence is the deadliest incident for American troops in Afghanistan this year. It comes hours after the remains of Army Ranger Leandro Jasso landed in the U.S. The 25-year-old lost his life during a gunfight with Al-Qaeda. Fox's Jillian Melly. This is Fox News. It's a crisp fall morning. Time for your daily pumpkin soy latte. As you wait for your coffee, you get a buzz. No, it's not your boss wanting extra whipped cream, but your ADT video doorbell. It's a package. Your new latte machine. No more $5 PSLs. Barista service. Brought to you by ADT. Designing and installing a smart home just for you. Backed by best-in-class 24-7 protection. Learn more at ADT.com. ADT. Real protection. License information available at ADT.com. Pros in the know start with Lowe's because Lowe's makes it easy to get a great price on a huge selection of the tools pros turn to every day. Right now, you can get your choice of a DeWalt 20-volt max cordless impact driver or a DeWalt 20-volt max cordless drill, only $99 each. That's right, only $99 each. Plus, each item comes with our price match guarantee. So, pro, now that you know, start with Lowe's. Offers valid while supplies last. See Lowe's.com slash price match for terms and conditions. Here is your one-minute news brief. Florida Governor Rick Scott is getting to pick a new judge for Northeast Florida after a state Supreme Court justice flipped his position on the case. A divided court ruled yesterday to not hear that case. Wet roads led to a hydroplaning accident yesterday in which the driver was ejected through the rear window of the car before the car crashed into a tree. The driver was found conscious and alert and was transported to the hospital. The former police chief of Biscayne Park is facing prison time for a conspiracy to frame black people of a crimes they did not commit. A Florida teen died after his truck hit two deer and then crashed into a tree near Interlochen in Putnam County. Temperatures are expected to drop into the upper 30s in parts of central Florida tonight. NASA's InSight spacecraft landed successfully on Mars, and Epcot is currently hosting its International Festival of the Holidays, where you can get a fried mozzarella sandwich at the Italian Pavilion. Sounds like Christmas to me, and that is your news brief from The Source. Tuesday will be a breezy day, and it won't be as warm as yesterday, with any clouds giving way to sunshine. Highs ranging from 60 in the northern part of the zone to 67 in the south. Clear and colder Tuesday night, lows generally in the 30s. Wednesday and Thursday, times of sun and clouds with a high Wednesday just 56 to 60. Thursday's high 64 to 68. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. If you're a smart Christmas shopper, then you need to check the super smart Christmas values this week at Bob Wine's Camellia Gardens in Ocala. How about a citrus tree as a gift? Bob has a many worth fruit right now, all at half price. All palms in stock are 50% off. And believe it, nothing says love better than a quality blooming Bob Wine's Camellia for Christmas. Smaller sizes start at just $9.99 and you can spend whatever you want all the way up to $199 for a Camellia. Super buy on you plant trees with prices starting at just five bucks. Gift certificates get up to $75 in free gift certificates 
when you go gifting at Bob Wines. Check us out, bobwineschameliagardens.net. Then get on over to Bob Wines on Southeast 38th Street, Ocala. Daily till 4, Saturdays till 2, in the same blooming place since 1952. It's that time of the year when Ocala celebrates the holidays with the Christmas Parade. Be sure to tune in at 5.30 p.m. on December 8th for our live broadcasting of all the festivities for the 60th Annual Parade. This broadcast is brought to you in part by First Federal Bank, serving the community since 1962, big enough to matter and small enough to care. Again, that's December 8th, starting at 5.30 p.m. 99 dollars is all 99 dollars is all take this down and pass it around 99 dollars is all what the special robin from optical outlets just 99 dollars for two pair of no line progressive bifocals and an eye exam oh no way yeah two pair of no line progressive bifocals and eye exam from optical outlets we need to tell all our listeners about optical outlets 99 dollars is all take this down and pass it around 99 dollars is all I think that was our cue, Caroline. We're returning now to uh, In the Garden with Caroline Baldwin. And uh, if you have a question for Caroline, the number to call is 622-9622. Cold temperatures moving in tonight. Yes. 32 is what they're saying, and that's right. always that magic number. That's that's a magic number. I mean, it's, it's um, you know, that well, that's a freezing number. Yeah, what freezing is the, temperatures. What is the role that the dew point plays in the formation of frost? What is that's that? That's a moisture that's in the air so what do you so how do you use that information i'm never real sure of how to figure that out i you know on, on that but i know you know if it's a high that if the temperatures and the moisture uh, just sort of you know fall in there that you know you're going to have a heavier heavier frost or or what to, if the dew to, point to, is to, high the dew po- i think if the dew point is high high because that's higher moisture okay yeah in the air and then your temperatures go lower so actually that yeah and and i might be wrong i had been told before that you can actually have frost without it being without it being freezing yeah and that and i think that's again that's that high moisture with a low temperature puts that in there and just you know i i don't know that i didn't understand that i think i just always forget the rule don't know right right the whole uh yeah let's see if we get because it doesn't really matter to me because i don't farm right 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 you know and and i mean that there's um different layers when, when farmers they actually have weather stations out in their fields that measure temperatures yeah, at like yeah, six yeah. feet off the ground as well as higher yeah, and yeah, things yeah, like yeah, that yeah. but now you know today right now it's breezy um so if you are putting your frost blankets down make sure you weight them down to the ground but if it's if it's going to be windy tonight which i don't know how much the air is going to be moving um that actually prevents the frost because it's keeping the air circulating oh, and really? it can't settle to the ground uh, so you you know we might get away with not having that but you still have that 32 degree temperature and with the winds from yesterday at least we had a little rain with it a uh, little bit of breeze today uh you do have to watch it plants actually don't just it's a wind burn more than necessarily a cold burn that occurs on some of them so i'm going to see what i can find here i was going to look what do we got today yeah, where's our, where's some, where's some weather channel stuff going on here? We'll see if we can bring it up here. <laughs> right now, of course, they're giving me Silver Springs for some reason. We're not in Silver Springs. We're actually the opposite side. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it's 49. Yeah. But you have listeners in Silver Springs. That's true. That's true. But it's saying it's 39, going to go down to 33. Uh, tomorrow's high is going to be 55. Again, Wednesday night, 36, Thursday, warming to 64. So not super, you know, the 64 to 70, 72, um, you know, is a little more closer to the norm for this time of year, the, you know, the 70, 72 degrees. Yeah. So, but, and, and, and the night lows of being in that lower 40s is not unusual for this time of year. If it would just stay put. But Florida us, returns let on us, Saturday, right? Yeah, let us acclimate to the temperatures. Right, right. And then, yeah, I think they were saying that Florida uh, warm weather returns after, you know. <laughs> just a few uh, days. Just a few days. And so that, again, and that's, that messes with, that messes with our 
our plants. Um, where's the temperature? I'm trying to read this thing. High, low. Okay. Uh, Saturday, well, Saturday 75, but yeah, Sunday, Monday, it's going to be a little, little warm, um, on the warm side, but you know, the rest of, we got, we got two nights here tonight, tomorrow night, um, gradual warming. And again, it looks like we're going to run that cycle. We got, uh, two lows, low thirties. Uh, then you got forties, uh, fifties, unfortunately some sixties back down to forties, fifties, uh, going down the next few days. So that 50 highs of seventies on, what is that? Monday of the following week, this coming Monday is going to be like 85, but the following or the the, this com coming Tuesday will be 82. So next week it's going to be warm. And then the following week we're going to be more seasonable on that se the Tuesday, following Tuesday, uh, where we'll be 70 and 51. So you know, keep the front, you know, keep everything handy, but it looks so far like just these two nights we have that's yeah, going to be cold for the next two yeah, weeks yeah, yeah. at least. I uh, yeah, don't know what we'll have coming up. And usually our coldest months are not until we hit that December, some in December, but January and February. Right. Yeah, you know, and and I have a tendency to call February February ugly because uh -huh. it'll get it'll be that overcast, uh -huh. windy, drizzly, cold day, which makes you go. I moved down south. Come on, go away. Uh, need to I, move I don't further like it. south. I need to be further south. I don't like the cold. Anybody who knows me knows I hate the cold. <laughs> um, which I already complained about it today on social media. What did you but, say? I, I said, oh, dang, <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> and then had replies from friends that are living up north going, well, it's 12 here. It, it's Rubbing such and it such, it's and worse, it's snowing. Right? Yeah, but you folks live there. I live here. Snow, like snow uh, last week or whatever it was in New Jersey. New Jersey, yes. New York was weird, and Pennsylvania, because like half the state got it, and the other state half got nothing. Well, yeah, probably the coastal areas didn't get anything because it stays warmer. Well, no, the Bronx got it. Oh, did it? And that's right up against the yeah. water, but the, but the lower midtown Manhattan didn't get didn't it. Didn't get any? No. Couldn't get across the, the, the uh, buildings. And, and like uh, northern Pennsylvania got it, but Philadelphia didn't really get anything. But... Uh, Parts of New Jersey where I was from actually got, got measurable. A lot. Yeah, they yeah. got yeah, which is just across the river from Philadelphia. Yeah, yes. One of our yeah. one of our yeah. publicists uh, said the, the the daycare in his community uh, was snowed in. The, the children had oh to my spend gosh. the night there. Oh wow! Yeah, that wow, crazy? Yeah. that is crazy. And they're having some crazy weather up there. So anybody has family and friends up in the you know northern parts of the country, you know, wish them well. Tell them stay off the roads if you don't need to be. You know, if you're not, you know, if your work doesn't make you yeah, go in, yeah. stay home. There's no, you know, Christmas shopping can wait another day. Yeah. You know, let the mailman drop it off. You know? <laughs> Speaking of Christmas shopping, by the way, we have a toy drive oh, here. yeah. And these toys will be picked up on December 14th. So, okay. Uh, and every year our listeners always come through for us. I'm so just if dinner. you didn't know we were doing it again, we're doing it again. It's for kids helping kids. This is an okay. amazing idea right. where, where they don't just hand out gifts to kids willy-nilly. What they right. do is they, first of all, they make sure these kids are really needy. Right. They clear it well, somehow with the schools. Probably this, through the school system, yeah. sure. And then the children who qualify come in and pick out a toy for somebody else oh, to give. Okay, so they're actually being able to shop it without having to... They don't to pay get, anything, but right, they just pick right, out a toy. And out. then the grown-ups will wrap them, and then their names are also, those children's names are also, are also on the list on, right, to get right. something, to receive something. Okay, but, okay. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That is kind of neat. So that then on cool. the day that whoever they live with, or parent, or guardian, right, or whoever... Right. They will say, "Okay, you can open it now." It's that's the right, right it's, time. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's, that is cool. The listeners, you know how it's been in past years. Oh, the yeah. Whole room gotta, is yeah, with toys. Full, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just had to put the reminder out. Just don't wrap them. Don't wrap bring, them. Bring right. them unwrapped. Un right, yeah. unwrapped, and that way, that way they. They don't have be to be new either. They can be uh, just. Oh, they nice. can be used. Yeah, yeah. just gently, oh, yeah. gently used. Yeah. Okay. Something cool. Kids will like. Right. Know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, get, and geared at all ages of kids. Do you know Because a lot of times, a lot of times, everybody thinks of the younger ones. Right, that's and, true. And, that's and really this, true. And the kids yeah, that yeah. are the 12 to, to 16, 17 kind of get left out because, of course, they're, they're, their wants are generally a little more pricey in yeah. things. But then still, right. there's books. 
There's a, there's all kinds of different things. Board games, which you've got a couple on the ground, you know, on the floor mm-hmm. there, yeah, and yeah. some other things are you know also yeah, there. That, too. That's really a, a, yeah. an, an important thing to remember. Yeah, yeah. The, the older kids. Yeah, that, you're right. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you know? I remember though when I was a, a younger parent and mm-hmm. had younger kids. I, I remember spending like a hundred dollars on something. With in those days was a lot. Well, yeah. And it was considered a Disney computer. And it would it oh, was wow. cool. It would answer questions. Okay. okay, right, right. And then I also got a play doh set, which was like a dollar. Right. And you know, play doh was the more more fun thing. The, the to, thing yeah, that yeah, kids that, were playing with the most oh, was yeah. the play. Yeah. yeah. Oh sure, so. sure. Oh yeah, it's a, it's sometimes the simpler the simpler things that are the more fun and. Uh, in fact, maybe I'll bring some Play-Doh in and put it under the tree. Play-Doh is fun. I mean, I like I like Play-Doh. I mean, <laughs> get the get the kids together. You having having some fun and. Uh, uh, Oh gosh, it's more than a few years. I, I think about an item, and it's like, oh my God, that was my daughter was in, I don't know, middle school when when I first saw it. It's this modeling clay that can be easily just baked in the oven. Oh wow, really? And it becomes becomes hard, but it's real light. Uh-huh. But it it models and and molds very nicely, and there's all different colors, so you can make you know if you're making people, make, you're making your own you know figurines. Right, right. You know, right. The the pants can be blue. Oh you wow! Know, or, and it's also paintable. Neat. And I forget what it's called, but it's really it's really cool clay. And you know, my daughter had actually made me a couple little things. And you still have them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice, nice. So. But they were they were neat and just I mean and you and you can even just you can use them to make ornaments and things like that yeah, as well right. because you can bake them I mean it's different than the salt dough you know that you can make up you know the salt and flour you know something to make it yourself yeah you, yeah, 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 one yeah of those yeah. home things but there was a there was a product by the way made by the Jello company okay that is moldable so it's like the first edible. Uh, Goop or something. They but, call it. I was going to say you make Jello jigglers. <laughs> but these is these have a, even more of a consistency than the jigglers. Oh, these are actually like you could pl- play with your food. In other oh, words. Oh, okay. Because I know they had one, and I saw the commercial, and I thought, really, you're going to let the kids do this? And I know it has nothing to do with garden, but it was a Jello. It's one of the <laughs> Jello molds, and and it's one that looks like little Lego blocks. So if you got a leg, a kid really into Legos, these are kind of neat. But that they even will will stack up but I'm, I'm watching the commercial and it's like they're picking them up and putting them in it's like i'm not eating after you <laughs> and i mean i'm pretty liberal with a 10 second no, rule kind know, of thing I but know. it's like hey kid play with your own legos leave mine alone I'll, yeah i'll eat my you know. <laughs> so i don't know if it's called jello play-doh or not but that i found oh. it yeah i know jello play-doh I know. <laughs> that's weird yeah, you, I wouldn't want the kids to eat it because they got their fingers in it and everything. Yeah, I mean, oh, it's yeah, one yeah, thing yeah. if here's your tub, you know, <laughs> you, you play with yours and, and eat your own and make sure you got a clean plate that you're playing on. Yeah, or, yeah. And I guess that's it. It's that you're playing with your little snack while you're or eating it. It's yeah. just for the for the mom who says, you know what? You if, if play you with eat this it, play it doesn't out. matter. Right, yeah. right, right. Don't, yeah, don't, we're, don't we're, really eat it. Yeah, and then you I just say, well, I'll have to look it up. Find out where to buy that one. What's it called? I don't know. I looked up Jello Play Doh and something actually came up, and I don't know if that was what we read about or not. Spell it. See if I'm spelling Play Doh. No, I'm not. There we go. Because um, they even got Jello Play Lego, Jello Play Kits, but Jello. Yeah. Jello Play Doh. Okay, no, this is you make it. This is, okay, this is just, this is homemade Play Doh that's using Jello <laughs> as. Uh, yeah. But As the, I guess the coloring and things like that, and I get you know it's not gonna hurt you. There's flour, water, salt, cream and tartar, hair too. cooking oil, and Jello. Uh, hmm. How to make Jello play doh? Yeah, that's all that is. But there was a product that was being sold too. I, I you know. Because you get the uh, Jello play doh recipe. Yeah, it's a craft can. Uh, <laughs> No cook. You have a, you have a phone call, Caroline. Okay, let's do I'll that. Take the call. Good sure. morning. You're on the air with Caroline. Yes, please. This is Gary Ocala. Yeah. I heard you uh, mention bananas earlier. Yeah. I have taken years to grow my bananas every year. Uh huh. And they're like three years, two years, one year, and I got two brand new ones, and a lot of them are have new leaves coming out. Oh. What's the best? What's the best way to protect? I got six feet 
five feet, four feet, three feet, one foot. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be hard because, you, you know, they... To, you know, because the leaves, if the leaves die, that's not hurting anything. They're just turning brown. They're, that's just the leaves. The only thing you need to do is make sure that the trunk of the tree does not die. Um, and that can be harder to do than, than anything. Because usually when the leaves will turn brown, the leaves will hang down over the, the tree trunk, actually helping to insulate the trunk of that tree. Um, your, your big trees and stuff, unless you could put up, like, like I was saying uh, earlier, something like, a, like an easy up, uh, you know, like a big canopy that you can then turn and wrap, um, creating a, a small greenhouse. But even those, I think your highest point in one of those might be six feet um i mean if they're all in a, uh, all in a cluster you could do you know something go ahead excuse me yeah uh here's my should i cut the leaves back and cover the stock no or should i no leave the leaves on there when the leaves turn brown they are going to help insulate that tree trunk how about if i put a small blanket over the trunk so that i can fit um, whatever you're going to cover really needs to come all the way to the ground. Um, you know, your small ones, the real little ones, if there's just like a small grouping of them, you could um, put something to where the, where whatever you're going to cover them with does not touch them. Because wherever it dig, touches. Can I, dig, can I dig up the little ones and keep them inside in the pot for the winter? Sure. Okay. okay. Sure. I've already decided to do that. I, yeah. But they're the easiest to cover. I'm just worried about the two the, 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 the big ones, this this cold spell we're having right now is going to turn all the leaves brown. It's not going to hurt the tree. How, what's the lifespan of these bananas? Do you know? Um, when a banana tree makes a bunch of bananas, that tree is done. It will put up small ones from the bottom the next season, but that that one tree, one stalk, will actually just, that that one's finished when you harvest I'm, that I'm, bananas. I'm beginning to decide that Ocala isn't made for bananas, but uh, I got... I can try covering them, but that I guess that's going to be it. Pretty much you let nature do its thing on bananas for us, but you're right. Banana, Central Florida is not a, a banana growing location. You but would they actually, are good. but uh, yeah, you, you would, you know, f to get consecutive or consistent banana harvest, um, yeah, that's not too easy to do for us. Usually, if you just let, let nature do its thing, because they, underground they've got a massive root system they come yeah, back I had, uh, yeah they come back I, if you've gotten bananas before um you see you see that it takes you know like a year and a half to get a tree mature enough but if the leaves die if the leaves turn brown that's fine you just want to leave them hanging there uh until next spring until spring i got, I got you on that thank you uh -huh. i had two three-year banana trees last year they had the purple blooming thing, mm -hmm. but no bananas. Oh, never! Was it late in the season that they finally bloomed? Yeah. That yeah, that unfortunately yeah. If, if they can bloom earlier on, hopefully, and sometimes again, that's just the maturity of the tree or when that tree finally decides to bloom. But bananas do pretty well here. You just have to realize nature's gonna knock them out some years. Um, uh, you can you know. Tent over some of the smaller ones, possibly, uh, and just slow it down. Yeah. Well, I thank you very much. You're if welcome. It any, if it gets any colder, I'm heading back to the Keys. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. We'll try to stay warm this these next couple of days. Thank you for helping all of us out here. I try, when you're quite welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So if he's from the Keys, they probably had great banana oh, plants yeah, down yeah, there, Oh, yeah, down right? there. you got your bananas. You can grow your coconut palms. You've got, you know, your true tropical uh, fruits and stuff, your mangoes, uh, anything, you know, that here we here we may try or we may f try to find some cold-hardy varieties. Uh, but just realizing, again, a lot of times it is just that matter of if a plant can acclimate, uh, a lot less damage actually happens, but unfortunately, that doesn't always go for us. 
By the way, you said coconuts. You mm-hmm. reminded me of coquito. Do you know what coquito is? It's a small. It's like a. It's like a coconut eggnog. Okay. It's, it's called the Puerto Rican eggnog. Oh, okay. Coquito. Coquito. Okay. So you like? Uh, it's an alcoholic eggnog, oh, I suppose. Yummy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Little rum. <laughs> and with some coconut, yeah, apparently. Yeah. In okay. It, I yeah. Guess. I don't okay. Know. Instead of just your traditional. Puerto, yeah. So is Puerto Rico more tropical? Like, oh, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I guess yeah. it would be, huh? Yep. Yes. Much. Yeah. You know, even though they have mountain regions and things like that, it's still oh, right, right, more. So, you know, yeah. Much more. Uh, Say rainforesty. So we have a lot of us. people living here right now after Hurricane Maria. They're that they're that are still, still yeah, here. That yeah. are still here. Yeah, and and you know, I guess they're they're making their you know setting up change just change their life over to to Florida, and it's you know yeah, it's always a thing. Of, yeah, I think if it was if it was my home was destroyed, I'd still want to you know, I don't know, yeah. to rebuild it or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure yeah, they are. Family and friends. You know, still, you know, back home kind of thing. Did I invite you to Ocala Covers Christmas? Did I invite you to that? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. (laughs) Are you going to do a video? Are you going to do a... I doubt that. (laughs) But you got some music friends. Maybe they could do one. We thought, oh, I don't know about We that. thought we would extend it to jokes. You want to do some jokes for it? So do, do, do a... Eh, I may have to think about it. Just put the camera on you say, what's Unless it, it, yeah, what, what, what come did up Santa Claus say to Mrs. Claus when the elves decided to go on strike? I don't know the answer. I'm just, oh, okay. just making up a, 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 I was gonna say, or, an or opening line. The, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 off, offhand, the only one I, the only little story one I know of, I probably don't want to put on there. It's like, yeah. <laughs> we, we won't, we won't answer the question of how did the angel get on top of the Christmas tree. Oh no! Yeah. Is, is there a dirty <laughs> punchline? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah kind of. <laughs> oh no! He, uh, why or how? Why did it's, you... it's, well? It's a why slash how. Yeah. You know. How did the angel how get on the top angel of the Christmas tree? How did the angel end up on the top of the Christmas tree? Hmm. Yeah, it was a very difficult Christmas Eve, and Santa was very stressed out, and the elves were having problems, you know, and the you know trying to get the mass production <laughs> of all the toys together, what? and everything's stuff in the bag, and a couple of the reindeers had you know runny noses, and and <laughs> this and that, and all kinds of things were just going on, and next thing you know, there was a knock on the door of the workshop, and Santa answers the door, and the angels at the door, and says, "We have your Christmas tree. Where do you want it?" <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Oh my gosh, That's, that was good. That was a great delivery too, by the way. We'll just leave it at that. But poor Christmas tree. Poor Christmas. And you can tree. get a live Christmas tree yeah. over at Bob Wines. Yes, you can get right plantable plantable live Christmas trees over yeah. at Bob Wines, and uh, and we also have Bob Wines Community Gardens uh, gift certificates here that uh, you know we're, we're we're giving away those. We're giving away ticket to. Uh, Passes family four pack passes to Wild Adventures theme park, and it's kind of like we, you know we were talking off air. It's like Bush Gardens, just in Georgia. It does look like. I Bush mean, it, it I went is. To the I mean, you go to the website. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, www.wildadventures.com. I mean, they have concerts. They, they have so many animals. They have animals. They have rides. Not just they a have few animals. A bunch of them, because and and some really different, unique ones. It's um, yeah. Well, if I can tell just, the listeners this, uh, we're really having a hard time giving these away, and I think it's because nobody knows about it. I, I think but so, or you, they think that it's far, and like you say, it's, it's like two a, a two-hour two-hour ride up. Uh, um, Look up uh, I seventy-five. The website wildadventures.com. Wildadventures.com. There's concerts, and you'll explore, see what you know, we're talking about. So we have them special if you want events, them. and they the only the only thing we have is that they need to be used. By the end of December. Right. Which, That's the only thing. Gives which, you a month. Gives you a month. Yeah. But if the kids are off school, if you got right. the kids or grandkids, um, you know, you got four pass, you know, to run up there. There's a good, a nice, you That's know, four day. tickets? Is that what it's four, for? Yeah, family four pass. Nice. Yeah. All right, so. you have a phone call. You ready for it? Sure. Good morning. You're on the oath, Carol Ann. Hey, guys. Just a quick uh, heads up for yeah. those trying to cover, you know, like mass amount of plants in right. the yard. Yeah. Just bundling together. Just pound some re- PVC in the ground. Mm-hmm. Take a piece of flexible rebar and make a dome over it. There you go. I mean, easy peasy. I posted a picture that's similar, but not what I'm talking about exactly. Right. On the page. Just, it's just easy. It, it, it is. And right, and it's reusable. Oh, I'm exactly. looking at your picture. The thing goes for those who have shallow fish ponds. Put that picture. Right. Some PVC and arch it. Hang a light if you need to. And just put a, a heavier... 
blanket, cloth, canvas, whatever over it. Just something to help hold the heat in. Yeah. Great idea. I see your picture right now on, on the Carol Ann site. On the page. Everybody All right. Stay warm. All right. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. Yeah. Bye. That, Bye. That looks nice, too, by the way. And that, and that, is, a, that is a great way. Um, I'm glad she did mention that because that is true. You know, that I, I was mentioning chairs, some kind of... Uh, um, you know, the, the bamboo sticks, but the piece of PVC pipe arched over uh, does make a real easy way to... What's up with my page? It looks nice. Yeah, you could bring that to the beach. <laughs> right? I guess you could. Put some yeah, shade I mean, over yourself. Yeah, there's some shade, yeah. That, um, but there's all kinds of different ways to cover. You just don't want it to touch and be laying on your plants. I mean, if it is, it might be just a little patch here or there that might get burned, but... Um, yeah, that that's, you know, something you just got to be careful with. And why am I having a hard time getting to my my thing? Here we go. Get the right get the right button pushed on this on the <laughs> silly page. And there it is. Oh, yeah, that's what she is. She, she's the one is just like a little shade thing. But she's right. You know, just a couple pieces of PVC, a couple pieces of short pieces of rebar. And that way it'll hold it into the ground. I have Makes a personal a hoop, question. Hoop house. Personal yeah. question. Is that uh -huh. one shirt? Or is yeah, it is. Two? It's one. It comes like that? Yeah, it came like that. That is yeah. cool. Yeah, one of my little Christmas Looks like shirts. you got a shirt under a shirt. Right, right. Yeah, the layer. The yeah, layer. yeah. But I just realized, I thought they were, um, I thought the sleeves were shamrocks. Oh, but no, I they're just, Grinches. Just look, yeah, yeah, they're Grinch they're faces. Grinches, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. That's, you know, everybody, you know, the Grinch, Grinch and Christmas. <laughs> but, but I'm sorry, the new movie, I'm not going to see it. How come? Because I'm a traditionalist. The Grinch is just a cartoon. Oh, the original, yeah, but the, the original. new one is a cartoon. Yeah, but it, they've changed it. Have it's, they? Yeah, it's different. They even changed, I mean, the Grinch. They say this is like the, the better Grinch of all of the Grinches. You can't, you can't, how can you, how can you, <laughs> how can it be better than the original? Are they, I don't know. I mean, nothing, I mean, the they original, I mean, but the story in the original was the best. As oh, well they, as, they as changed well as, the story? I believe the story has changed. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. No, I'm a traditional. Do you know who can do the song really well? Who's that? Joe. Oh, Kenny. That mean one song? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I can, yeah, his he voice is He sounds just deep. like yeah, the guy. Yeah, his voice yeah. is deep. So that does work. Yeah. But it looks like we're uh, out of time, I believe. Probably oh, my gosh. Probably over. And, yeah. And, oh, my gosh, well, Carolyn. I, I guess I was we, having fun. We were just having too much fun. Hopefully, I will be in next week. Um, we'll see. I'll let you know. Thank you for telling me the time. <laughs> I looked at, uh-oh. <laughs> All right. We'll be uh, right back. Thank you, Carolyn. This <laughs> is you. The Source, WOCA Ocala. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Here is your one-minute news brief. Florida Governor Rick Scott is getting to pick a new judge for Northeast Florida after a state Supreme Court justice flipped his position on the case. A divided court ruled yesterday to not hear that case. Wet roads led to a hydroplaning accident yesterday in which the driver was ejected through the rear window of the car before the car crashed into a tree. The driver was found conscious and alert and was transported to the hospital. The former police chief of Biscayne Park is facing prison time for a conspiracy to frame black people of a crimes they did not commit. A Florida teen died after his truck hit two deer and then crashed into a tree near Interlochen in Putnam County. Temperatures are expected to drop into the upper 30s in parts of central Florida tonight. NASA's InSight spacecraft landed successfully on Mars and Epcot is currently hosting its International Festival of the Holidays where you can get a fried mozzarella sandwich at the Italian Pavilion. Sounds like Christmas to me. And that is your news brief from The Source. Tuesday will be a breezy day and it won't be as warm as yesterday with any clouds giving way to sunshine. Highs ranging from 60 in the northern part of the zone to 67 in the south. Clear and colder Tuesday night lows generally in the 30s. Wednesday and Thursday, times of sun and clouds with a high Wednesday just 56 to 60. Thursday's high 64 to 68. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg.
If you're a smart Christmas shopper, then you need to check the super smart Christmas values this week at Bob Wines Camellia Gardens in Ocala. How about a citrus tree as a gift? Bob has a many with fruit right now, all at half price. All palms in stock are 50% off. And believe it, nothing says love better than a quality blooming Bob Wines Camellia for Christmas. Smaller sizes start at just $9.99 and you can spend whatever you want all the way up to $199 for a Camellia. Super buy on you plant trees with prices starting at just five bucks. Gift certificates? Get up to $75 in free gift certificates when you go gifting at Bob Wines. Check us out, bobwineschameliagardens.net, then get on over to Bob Wines on Southeast 38th Street, Ocala. Daily till four, Saturdays till two, in the same blooming place since 1952. It's that time of the year when Ocala celebrates the holidays with the Christmas Parade. Be sure to tune in at 5.30 p.m. on December 8th for our live broadcasting of all the festivities for the 60th Annual Parade. This broadcast is brought to you in part by First Federal Bank. Serving the community since 1962, big enough to matter and small enough to care. Again, that's December 8th starting at 5.30 p.m. AC units in Florida take a beating, even in winter. To keep your AC in ace condition, call Ace AC of Ocala today. And for a limited time, you can save $30 on your Ace of a Deal maintenance plan. Visit aceairfl.com for details and save $30 off your regular low price using code WOCA30. Or call 352-247-4087 to get your AC in ace condition with Ace AC of Ocala. Friends, countrymen, tourists, and Ocalans, lend me your ears. Hey, speaking of ears, there is an opportunity for you to help feed and provide good maintenance, housing, and medical care for Marion County's rescued big cats, bears, monkeys, and other disabled or unreleasable wild and exotic animals. Take a tour on Wednesdays or Saturdays of the Endangered Animal Rescue Sanctuary. Call 352-266-2859. The Endangered Animal Rescue Sanctuary is affectionately known as EARS. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Auto repair with person care, we know what we're talking about. Matt Gibbs and the guys over at Sunrise Automotive will treat you right, will treat you right. Yes, he will treat you right. Uh, five minutes after 10 o'clock, Matt Gibbs is here from Sunrise Automotive and Crossroad Auto Sales. So if you have a need to get your car fixed, you might want to uh, go see Matt. If you want to just ask a question about that noise your car is making or the uh, slow leak in your right rear tire that had 13 pounds in it the other day that somehow looked pretty good, but still 13 pounds. No. <laughs> I don't know if that happened to you, but you might want to call in and ask Matt about it. <laughs> <laughs> The number is 6229622. And if you just need a new car or you want to buy a new car as a gift for somebody, uh, Matt is over at Crossroad Auto Sales. Also, the truth is they're both on the same property. Uh, great place to buy a used car. A lot of times you don't know when you see a used car dealer and you're not familiar with who is running it. But because we know Matt, I, I can promise you, you will be happy with whatever you buy. Even if there's something wrong with it that he didn't catch before he went out for sale, he'll take care of it, right? Because you yep. did for me. Yeah, absolutely. So, how's everything? Everything's good. How's you? How have, you? have you had anybody buy a car as a gift? Oh, I don't know if they've bought it as a gift. Oh, you wouldn't know that? Yeah, sometimes they'll tell, but sometimes they're just in there wanting to buy the car. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we heard something the other day, and I've been waiting till now to ask you this. Okay. Okay. Somebody said, unless you're really rich, the best way to buy a car is to buy a one-year-old car and then get a new one-year-old car every year. Always trade it in. Because it's going to hold its value for a year. You're not going to have to take up that the, the, de, the decline in value when it first leaves the lot. Let the rich guy take care of that because he's going to trade in his car next year anyway. Is it the best way to buy the car? Yeah, the, uh, most of, the, the least likely to have uh, mechanical problems if you have a one-year-old car that you take to the two-year mark. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a perspective. Yeah. You know, but I, I don't know. There, I think there's a lot of folks 
that can't afford to buy a car like every year or every two years. So that would be so that would be the upper end of the income level. Yeah, I mean it's like to let the rich guy hit the you know he gets the first car. Okay, and then all of us other guys can do this other deal. <laughs> I can't. Well, I mean that's no, what I'm, I'm not that's talking I'm about saying. me, but I I, I I know your listeners are wealthy, so. Yeah, oh, the, the thirteen of them. Yeah, they they, they tell me they are. <laughs> I, I you know I don't know if that's the program for everybody. You know. Well, I, I know it's not for me, but I'm wondering. There I, are folks that do that. Yeah. There really are, and and they why don't they just buy a new car then if they can afford well, that? I, I, because they're smarter than that, I guess. Yeah. You know, but is it smart to buy a one year old car? Yeah, is, yeah, it is because. Well, I mean, it's it's, it's still under year, warranty. One year old isn't really the 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 the, the scenario. The the warranty. The, and but here, can I throw out a scenario? Yeah, yeah. First of all, I'd like to say happy birthday to my wife. Happy birthday! Sheila's going to... Today is Tuesday, November 20th. Nice. Okay, today's her birthday. Happy oh, birthday. How old? I'm not going to tell you how old my <laughs> wife is. <laughs> I did that on purpose. I know you did. I just wanted to see you squirm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but Sheila, he didn't squirm at all, just I, so you know. He, yeah. he didn't miss I, the I beat. No, no. We just weren't going to go there. <laughs> no. So so okay so I have a customer. Uh-huh. She she she's got a very successful business here in town, uh-huh. and she brings in her Tahoe, and we're going to service it. She asked me after we serviced the Tahoe, man, would you just drive it down the road and just 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 to just to see what you think about how it drives? Okay, okay. So I said sure. So we service it. I drive it down <laughs> the road. That's what I want to do too. I come back and I'm like, dear woman, how do you even drive this thing? And she's like, well, what do you mean? I said, let me show you what I mean. Instead of explain to you what I'm talking about, let me go show you. So I ran to a dealer, another dealer here in town, mm-hmm. and I grabbed a vehicle off his lot, because I didn't happen to have that type of vehicle in uh-huh. my place. Uh-huh. And, I, and I brought it over to her, and I said, get in this car and go drive it. And she comes back and she says, oh my, do I... And it was the same kind of car she same, had? Same kind of car. Okay. And it's, oh my... I understand what you're talking about. Now, her car probably had close to, well, I think it had over 200,000 miles on it. And this car had 40,000 miles on it. And, and, and need, make a long story short, she drove home with that car that day. So you, you made a sale for, an, for uh, somebody else? Yeah. Oh, nice. And, um, and, and that, that car was a perfect deal for her. It wasn't, it, it had, it actually had, I think, 28,000 miles on it. And, um, you know, I, I look, that, that, that car was a great deal for her. And the reason it was a great deal for her is it might have been close to the end of its warranty period. But here, she's getting out of a car that had 200,000 miles on it. It never had an engine. Replaced. What was wrong with hers? What was it doing? It was just. It was just tired. It just. It was just tired. sluggish or not. It was wore out. The front end had a lot of slop in the front end. Really, it just needed a lot of stuff done to it. And you knew just by and, driving and it. I, yeah, I could feel it. And and so, do you really want it? I yes, I could have taken that car and turned it in, uh, fixed it all up. Or is it time for her? Because of her. So that's the relationship we need to have with you. We need to, right. because otherwise I wouldn't know. I mean, I think the guy who goes for the one-year-old car every year doesn't know cars. He probably doesn't have a friend like you. Well, and I have, a, and I have a real good friend like that that will not. He, 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 he won't buy a car with a lot of miles on it. He won't. He just is. Well, that makes sense. That. Yeah. Because he, because it is so scary for him. You know what I'm saying? It's scary. Even you don't want to break down, yeah. And you're not going to break. I mean, that's uh, the thing. Most people just just get me there. You know. Yeah. But I mean, that car that's got forty thousand miles is going to get you there. <laughs> that, I mean, this lady's car had two hundred thousand miles, and it got her there. This is a true story. I'm not making this up. But if you don't believe me, you can call my shop. But okay, last week. I have a customer. He drives from South Carolina. South Carolina. Nice. So just to go to you. Just because he wanted me to work on his truck. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Now, this truck has 600,000 <laughs> miles on it. Wow. Six, that's 550,000. Did you drive it? 
Yeah, I, dr- I drive it every time he brings it, and we and drive it. And it, and it drives. So it passes your test. Yeah, and he. But see, he loves this truck. Now this guy, this guy could buy and drive whatever he wanted. Okay. And he could write a check and be done. Okay. Right. Not to make no payments. Not worry about it being one year old. He has the finances to do that. But he drives this truck. He loves this truck with a half a million miles on it. And we just keep it. And he comes to you regularly? He comes to me at least, uh, probably, I'd say probably three, four times a year. Wow. And you have a phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Matt. Yeah, interesting subject. You know, like, Matt, when you got people coming in looking at cars, you, you know, it, it's like, uh, you know, how, you know, like a, a 10-year-old car with 50,000 miles on it or a 1-year-old car with 150,000 on it, which which would be the it, – it's kind of hard to determine which would be the better deal, right? Well, I mean, it's 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 really – the car's going to tell me which one of – which, which car is the better deal. You know, I could. I, I I bought a I bought a Dodge truck at the at the auction one day. This Dodge truck had three hundred and twenty thousand miles on it when I bought it. Yeah. But this truck looked like it had fifty thousand miles on it. It was unbelievable. It was all yeah. highway miles. But then I'll get another car that'll have forty thousand miles on it, and it looks like someone drove it through the jungles of Africa. You know, I mean, it's yeah. just it's just it's just crazy. Yeah, I'd rather have the truck with the three hundred ten thousand miles on it. So right. that's where that's one of the things that I do that I do probably different than a lot of other guys. Every car that I buy, every car that's on my lot, every single car I have touched, I've looked at, and I've ex- inspected before I even before I put it on my lot. And then once it gets to my lot, now I my, I have other people to inspect it. Yeah. Basically speaking, is it easier to sell a newer car with a lot of miles rather than an older car with hardly any? Well, it really depends on the person. It depends on yeah. the person. It depends on their finances. It depends on, you know, I, I try not to sell a car to anybody that I don't talk people into buy this car. Even Larry. Even Larry. When Larry came, <laughs> Larry's like, I want this convertible. And I, in my heart... <laughs> I'm like, no, you don't. Yes, it did. I did want yeah. it. Yeah. He wanted it, you know. But I, I knew that that wasn't a good car for Larry. But, I, but yeah. that was Larry's yeah. choice. And then Larry had to drive the car to find out. I had to loan him a car and let him drive it for a thousand miles. And then he comes back and says, "Man, now this is a car. Yeah, that's yeah. the one I wanted you to have, brother. You know. Yeah. But I, I you know, it, everybody's different, and I love to put people in stuff that something that they want. Yeah. Yeah. See, another real quick question, you know, being holiday time, you know, with all the shopping and buying and gift giving and all that stuff, is a used car, is is this a busy time for you guys or is it kind of dead? Well, it, 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 it's, it, I don't know, this year, last year it was horrible. Last year this time was horrible. This year it's already, it's just totally different than it was last year already. And, uh, but, but, but our, our business and my business, you know, doing that, I do a lot of the, uh, my own financing and whatnot, um, yeah. That, that's going to really start taking place after the beginning of the new year when people start getting their income tax money back. Yeah, do you find a lot of people coming in by you and saying, "Hey, I want to get a Christmas car, car for my kid or my wife or something"? Um, not, not so much. Um, not so much. I, I see my more, like mostly my stuff is going to be like, "Hey, I just got my income tax money, and I'm ready to buy a car. And can you help me with that? You know, and and, and that's what I see more than anything." Yeah. Um, but yeah, there will be a lot of red ribbons and bows and stuff being put on cars in the next couple of <laughs> yeah, months. Man, they will, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, have a have a have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. You too, man. So there's an article I'm looking for right now that that Ford wants to eliminate. Here it is. Uh, Ford wants to eliminate odor from new cars by baking them. Did you, did you happen to see that? No. Can I read it to you? Yeah. Oh, come on. We got a For 99 cents, you can read it to me. <laughs> Ford Motor Company has filed a patent application for an odor removal process that eliminates the new car smell after a vehicle has been purchased. This is the latest attempt in an industry effort to accommodate consumer tastes in different parts of the world. Consumers in China say they hate the new car smell. Well, that's an interesting thing. We, we love that smell in this country. 
Typically, everybody says, I want a new car smell, right? Yeah, like, you can go buy it at Walmart. Don't they sell it in a bottle, like new car smell? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, right. you spray it in I your car. I thought so. So anyway, they have a new patent. Uh, consumer feedback from Chinese buyers in recent years has been consistent. More than 10% of drivers complained about the issue. How about that? Who knew that was even a thing? I, I always thought the new car smell was put in there intentionally. Why don't they just do this? I, I got an easy way to correct that. Just put a cat in there in a few hours. <laughs> oh, that'll get rid of it. Yeah. That'll get rid of that. Put a dead mouse in the headliner. <laughs> there you go. That'll do it, too. Yeah, I've seen that. I've, had, I've experienced that one before. <laughs> hey, if you are listening and you are thinking you want to get a gift for somebody who owns a car, drives a car, is in cars all the time, uh, you know, in addition to Matt fixing cars, he also sells gift certificates so that you can fix somebody's car in the future. Right? That's right. Just keep that in mind. And uh, tires are always a good thing. What's another good thing people usually get as an accessory gift? Tires aren't really an accessory. But yeah, but you'd be surprised. I mean, people, will, some people, you know, accessory gift, there's all kinds of things you could add to your car. But most of the time when we do it, it's 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 practical stuff. You know, they need the oil change. Yes, they need to get yes, service and yeah. wiper blades and brakes and, you know, and, you know, just, just the things that, the maintenance and, and to that that car's needs on the cars need on a regular mm-hmm. basis. And tires are tire, nobody likes to buy tires. I don't think, but you have to. Well, I, I don't think anybody really likes. You know, that's the thing about me. It, you know, I got this company, okay? And this company, I get to see both sides of people. I see the happy side of people, uh-huh. and I see the upset and the mad side of people. Because when people come in and buy a car, that's that. That's a happy side. Yes, yeah, it's happy. Like, yeah. Excited. I got me a new car. We go, go, <laughs> come on, let's go for a ride. And then, and then they, 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 and then they got to bring the car in and get it fixed. And that's the other side of the people. <laughs> so I got to deal. I got to deal. I got to put on, change my hats real quick. You know, <laughs> are you a happy person or a sad person today? I'm a, I'm a sad person. Okay, you got something wrong with your car? Let's, let's, let's. You know, so. I think with the gift certificates and stuff like that, I, th- I think it just helps people. You know, here's here's something that's gonna. Yeah, so it won't be so. You won't be yeah. so angry. Yeah. Well, the thing the thing about it is because we do the news here. I hate the stories that there's an accident that could have been prevented if somebody had gotten new tires. Because those every year, there's a, it's a few of them, I don't know how many, but every year there's a story about an interstate wreck. Somebody's, the tire came apart or something because it hadn't been changed and it should have been. And, you know, it's just one of those things that you hate to hear. Well, and, and seeing that, that goes back to maintenance you know did a tire come apart just because it was low on air and that could be too you know? yeah, yeah 13 pounds in my tire the other day see so you had a nail or something in there didn't something you? i don't know did you put air in it yeah filled up and still filled so i don't know I don't know if somebody did came you actually out. check it with a gauge, or did you? Look? No, that thing on the at the at the convenience okay, store. Okay, okay. It tells you it said 13 pounds, and it went up to 32, well, and everything was fine. Yeah, but you need to get it checked out. Because I know. I should take it to you. See, see that? See right there? See right there? That's you, an example. That's an example. <laughs> you had 13 pounds of air in the tire. Yeah. Okay. That's so crazy. You put, you put air in it to bring it to me. At least let me check it. How come 13 pounds can hold up a car? That just doesn't seem like no, enough. No, none. Zero, it doesn't take no air to hold up a car. <laughs> <laughs> it's still going to stay up. <laughs> it just doesn't seem like it should be enough, right? 13 pounds is all it takes. Yeah, I'm sitting that. there looking around. And oh, I, that's I, what you're doing. Okay. And yeah. I got this light. <laughs> There's this light. <laughs> That shines in your eyes. <laughs> right, right, right. Is it bothering you? Only when I stare at it. You know what we haven't heard in a while? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I haven't heard this in a while. Cars are cars all over the world. Cars are cars. <laughs> 